how to make a The Last of Us inspired post-apocalyptic world. Open your footage. Set the scene frames and prefetch the footage. Set the start and end frame where you want them. Make sure the frame rate matches the footage. Set correlation to 0.9. Add markers by pressing Command. And make sure that you're in perspective mode. You need at least eight markers. Look for high contrast features like corners and try and space them out in the frame. Now press track forward to calculate. You should see a red and green line. In Solve, go to Filter Tracks to filter out any tracks with problems. Delete the problem tracks. Press Solve Camera. You want a result that's below one pixel. Now choose Set as Background. Use three points on the ground to make the floor. With the cursor as origin, rotate the camera until the perspective lines match up with the scene. I use the free gaffer plugin to light my scenes but you can choose any HDRI for the sky. Try to find one that matches the light in the scene. Add a cube and line it up with the base of the building. Scale the cube to the size of the background building. Use Control R to create cuts where there are features like awnings. Use Alt-E to extrude along the normals. Add a ground plane and make both the building and the plane shadow catchers. Roughly extrude other features like windows and doors. Add any foreground objects like the post and bench to be holdout layers. Install Ivy Generator in Preferences. Press Add Ivy. Use the drop downs to control the Ivy's direction thickness, and shape. To add more ivy, move the origin point around on the model and the ivy will generate from that point. Once you have what you want, join the ivy curves. Adjust the resolution and thickness. Convert the curves to mesh. Add a decimate modifier to simplify the curves.
add a remesh modifier and use voxel. For this texture, I added a couple of Musgrave textures and added a color ramp. I also added a spherical gradient so that it would be darker in the middle and lighter on the edges. Pull around with the colors on the color ramp to get the result that you want. Multiply your Musgrave and your gradient textures. Use the color ramp to get the desired color. Add some shine for realism and add a Fresnel to the subsurface if you want it to have a waxy finish. Using a noise texture and a Musgrave texture, create a new displacement texture to add detail to your model. You can also find a ton of pre-made textures for this part online. To make the fungus branches, find a reference image and using the grease pencil in draw mode, trace the shape. Convert the grease pencil to a path and change the thickness and resolution in curve settings. Convert the curve into a mesh and remesh again using voxel. Add the texture that we just made. Place the fungus tips where they will meet up with the roots. To wrap the tips around objects, use the proportional editing tool to move the branches. To make the other fungus, start with a circle and subdivide it. In sculpt mode, use the cloth brush to ruffle the edges. Use the elastic deform tool to warp the shape. Extrude the shape and merge the edge vertices using merge by distance. Add a cloth modifier. Use the silk preset. Turn on the pressure and turn off gravity. Then apply the shape. Place the fungus where you'd like around the walls. Add a quadratic sphere gradient. Use the object texture. 
add a fernal for the subsurface and a color ramp to the gradient. Mix or multiply a noise texture. Build out foreground objects and set them to shadow catcher or hold out. Add a tree PNG as an image to create a realistic shadow. Add detail to the foreground objects with bevels. Add a plane and subdivide. Add a particle system to the plane using hair particles. Using weight paint, map out where you want the mushrooms. I'm using a mushroom model from a previous project, but you can find them easily online. In particle settings, set the density to group. Set the collection as the render object. Now scale the render object and randomize the rotation. At this point, you're ready to render. Preview and render using the foreground and the background in compositing.